today we're talking about reciprocal trigonometric functions. So we have to define them at first. We have the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. And these are going to be reciprocals of what we've already talked about. We've talked about the sine, we've talked about the cosine, and we've talked about the tangent. So each of these three, one going with each one, is a reciprocal of one of these three. So to start off with, hopefully you can see that the cotangent is going to go with the tangent. All right? This is how they're abbreviated. We have the cosecant is CSC, secant is SEC, cotangent is COT. We say the cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over the tangent of theta. That is its definition. All right? Now, we have what's left. We have the sine and the cosine. And to help you remember, again, they are reciprocals, but they don't start with the same letter. So if this is the cosecant function, then this is going to be the reciprocal of your sine function. The secant is going to be the reciprocal of your cosine function. Okay? So let's go back to our unit circle and talk about how that's going to fit into what we already know. Our secant, cosecant, and tangent are reciprocals of all of these numbers that we have on our unit circle. So what I like to do, if you notice, we only have a few different numbers, and then we they change according to the positive and negative. So what I like to do, so that I don't have to calculate every time, is go and write the different numbers that we have. So I have the square root of 3 over 2 is one of them. I have one half. I have the square root of two over two. I have one. Actually, we could say uh, we have one or, we'll put this in the same box, or negative one. I have zero, and then we also have undefined. So let's talk about the easiest one first, and that would be one. All right, and according to my chart, this is my x value. And so this row, I'm going to put in the reciprocal, or 1 over the value. So 1 over 1 is 1. And I wanted to point this out, is the negative stays with it. So if your original number is negative, your reciprocal will be negative also. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. If x is 0, the reciprocal is 1 over 0. So you can see that that one will be undefined. And that means if I'm doing 1 over undefined, that's going to be 0, because that really just puts 0 on the top. OK, another one should be pretty self-evident is the reciprocal of 1 half, and that's 2. So we just have two that are a little more challenging to remember. So what I'm going to do is just to refresh you on your algebra. I have the square root of 3 over 2. And if I want to take the reciprocal of it, that's 1 over the square root of 3 over 2. Then I'm going to keep the numerator, change from division to multiplication, and flip my denominator. Well, I can't leave it as 2 over the square root of 3, so I have to rationalize it. And that gives me 2 square roots of 3 over 3. So whenever I need the reciprocal of this, it's going to be 2 square roots of 3 over 3. And the other one we have is the square root of 2 over 2, the reciprocal of it. Again, keep, change, flip. We rationalize it. And you can see that that gives you 2 square roots of 2 over 2. Lots of 2's. The ones on the outside simplify. So I'm left with the square root of 2. So that's our chart. Now watch how you can use it. I'm going to give an example, and then I'll go back to what we have. Let's say I want to find the cosecant of 300 degrees. I'm going to go to my unit circle. I'm going to find 300 degrees. Uh, I'm going to know that my cosecant is the reciprocal of my sine. And my sine is the second coordinate. So that means I need the reciprocal of that. The negative stays there. The reciprocal of the square root of 3 over 2 is 2. 
square roots of 3 over 3. So let's go back to do some more examples. Okay, so some more examples that we have tells you not to use your calculator. We're looking for the cosecant of pi over 3. So if you go to your unit circle and find pi over 3, you should see the coordinates 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. <laughs> cosecant again is 1 over the sine. This is my value for sine. So 1 over that number is going to be 2 square roots of 3 over 3. Okay, the cotangent of negative 5 pi over 4. Find that on your unit circle. And you should find, um, and, and to help you in case you have difficulty, 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. So negative 5 pi over 4 is going to be in the second quadrant. So that makes our values negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And the tangent, of course, is negative 1. So we need the reciprocal of that tangent value of negative 1. Tan I mean, excuse me, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. All right, and the last one we have is the secant of 3 pi, which reminds me, that sometimes on my circle, again, so I don't have to think so much, I remember, so I write down the words even and odd. So surely you know, if we, this is zero. If I go halfway around the circle, I'm at pi. And then continuing, I'm at two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, so forth and so on. So if you had 81 pi, you don't have to count it, just know that all your odd values of pi are over here and your even values are over here. So if I'm calculating 3 pi, I'm going to be on the left side of my unit circle there. And the secant of 3 pi, again, my coordinates negative 1, 0. Secant is 1 over the cosine, and 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Now, the next set of examples that we have have you used in your calculator? So pause it and get your calculator if you don't have it with you. The important thing to remember is when to have it in radians and when to have it in degrees. And we've talked about if there is no symbol, then it's in radians. So this will be radians. This will be radians. This has a degree symbol. It will be degrees, and then we'll be back to radians. So punch it in your calculator. Pause it if you want to try it first. But the answers that we have are, it says round to the nearest thousandth, so that gives me approximately 2.16. Zero, but we don't need to write the zero. Then we have, <coughs> excuse me, approximately 4.649. Then we have approximately 1.035. That was in degrees. And back to radians, 3 pi over 2 is at the bottom of my circle, so that means the point is 0, negative 1. Secant is 1 over the cosine, and so that, of course, is undefined. Actually, I forgot I was supposed to be using my calculator there. So you can punch it in your calculator, you get the same thing. You'll probably get domain error or syntax error on your calculator. Okay, next we need to go do some graphs. So... On our graphing, to graph our reciprocal functions, we want to remember our original three trig functions that we've talked about. So, with my sine curve, remember that we start at zero, okay? We have uh, a max of one, a min of negative one. We start at zero, one, two, three, four. We go to two pi, and we end at zero. Halfway between is a zero. Halfway between the first two is a max. Halfway between the last two is a min. So we connect them.
and there's our sine curve. Okay, so cosine we go between 1 and negative 1 again, and 0 to 2 pi. So we put our labels. But the cosine curve starts at a max, ends at a max, halfway between is a min, and halfway between each one is a 0. So then I connect these. And I'm going to do that one again because I keep missing my points. And there we have our cosine curve. Okay, and our tangent, okay, tangent is straddles our y-axis. So remember that we have our asymptotes. Let's then go get some asymptotes for our uh, graph. And hopefully you remember these asymptotes are at uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 because the period of our tangent function is pi. Okay, um, we have a key point at 1 and negative 1 and we remember that because the tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1 so that would be a coordinate uh, that satisfies this equation. Begins in an asymptote, ends in an asymptote, halfway between is a 0 then I remember pi over 4, which is going to be halfway between 0 and pi over 2, is at 1, which means negative pi over 4 is negative 1. And then I connect it to look like my sine curve. I mean, excuse me, my tangent curve. <coughs> okay, on to our cosecant. Now, the thing to remember is that these are the reciprocals of the one above it. So if I have the cosecant, and it's 1 over the sine, then 1 over any 0 is going to be undefined and an asymptote. Uh, we're going to have the same key points with 1 and negative 1, but let's go put in some asymptotes. I have a 0 here. That gives me an asymptote right here. I have a 0 at pi. I have an asymptote at pi. 0 at 2 pi, another asymptote at 2 pi. So we'll label those pi and 2 pi. Okay, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So those points stay. And hopefully you can see that if you, if when you're getting close on the sine curve, you're getting close to the x-axis, this number might be 1 one hundredth or 1 over 100. So when you take the reciprocal of it, it's going to be very large, or 100. So each of these numbers that you take the reciprocal of creates a graph that looks like this. And then we have our negative values. <clears throat> In a similar fashion, for the cosine, we're going to put asymptotes where we have our zeros. And another one here. Okay, and you can see to get that full spectrum, we actually put another asymptote over here. And we'll label those asymptotes. This one is pi over 2. This is negative pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. Because you can see that this is your pi and this is your 2 pi. Okay, I have my same key points of 1 and negative 1. And I find the 1 on my cosine, and that's my reciprocal value, and it'll have the same shape that we have on our cosecant. And our negative 1 will be the same. So we're doing our best to make it look like that. And back at 2 pi, it's at 1, so I know that a graph will do something of that sort. Okay? Now, when we come to the cotangent, again, I'm going to have my asymptotes, but see my asymptote is going to be at 0. And as we mentioned, it will have the same period. So my period is pi, so that's going to be where my ending part of my um, 
period is. There's pi. That's pi units. So this is pi. This is 0. And this, of course, is pi over 2. I have my key points of 1 and negative 1. Now, keep this in mind because it's that same key point. Pi over 4, 1. So where's pi over 4? It's over here. So that's the value that's 1. And the other one is negative 1. You still have your 0 halfway. And that means this is my cotangent curve. OK, so those are your basic graphs. And now we're going to go just do four quick examples. If you understand, you can go on if you want to watch some more. Then we're just going to do examples of those curves. So first off, I have y equals the cosecant, cosecant of theta minus 2. So as we have discussed, we have that means that this is going to take my cosecant, normal cosecant curve, and shift it down two units. OK, so I'm going to label my graph by 2's, 2 and negative 2. All right, I'm going to put my asymptotes at the same place. So we went from, my well, period didn't change, so I go from 0 to 2 pi. And I think if you look right above, you can see where our asymptotes are. They are at 0 and pi and 2 pi. And now we go back to what our graph was. Normally at pi over 2, we're at 1. So at pi over 2, I would be 1, but I have to shift it down 2 units. So I'm going to go 1, 2, and that puts me right here. And then I'm going to make it my general cosecant curve. And um, at 3 pi over 2, I would be at negative 1. Again, I have to go down 2 units, so that's going to be negative 3. And I'm going to sketch my curve. OK, so that's 43. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put 44 right here. I'm going to put 45 here, down below, and then 46. OK, so looking at 44, I have the secant of 1 fourth theta. Okay, remember we talked about that the period is the same as its uh, as its uh, reciprocal function. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, so it will still have a period of 2 pi affected by my b, which is 1 fourth. And that simplifies to 8 pi. That's your keep change flip. So I'm going to go and put my asymptotes. Actually, let's go label my graph. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8 pi. That's my period. 4 pi. And we're going to go between, uh, let's, we'll go ahead and make that 1 and negative 1. OK. So to graph it, oh, i got to put my asymptotes in. I'll put our asymptotes. OK, for my secant function, remember we straddle the y-axis. OK, and, and then we can graph. So at 1, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So that's my key point to let me know that I'm going to sketch it like this. Got my 1, got my negative 1, and we're good to go. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to our textbook and you check in the back of the book, our directions say graph it between 0 and 2 pi. This is 2 pi right here. Remember, because my period was 8 pi. So you're only going to see this section of the graph when you go and check your answer in the back or at the end of the screen where I have all the answers. So just, I like to graph the whole thing so you have a good reference, but just know that if that's all you need, that's all you have to graph. <laughs> okay, number 45, we're looking at y equals the negative secant of pi theta. So we have a similar graph, but actually, this time our period has changed. So my period is 2 pi over pi, which becomes 2. OK, so I have a whole period between 0 and 2. I am going to make each tick mark. 
1. So I'm going to go 1, this will be 2, because I'm supposed to go, I need to make sure that I go from 0 to 2 pi. So if I make 2 over there, I won't be covering that. That's 4, and then 6, and a little bit more, 6.28 is, of course, my 2 pi. So if my period is 2, then we think of my asymptotes, okay? Remember, they're not on the tick marks. They're on the odd ones, okay? So that makes my asymptotes here in between these tick marks. So we're going to draw the asymptotes to get to, to cover 0 to 2 pi. And I uh, didn't label my y-axis. My y-axis will go ahead and label as 1 and negative 1. And that's enough to graph. So that's how my period changes. And I go to my key points. And I'm going to sketch my graph. And alternate basically these regions bound by the asymptotes. One being positive and one being negative. All right, and again, we had to cover the whole thing because 2 pi is 6.28. So we have to go all the way to, and here's my 6, so this should have us covered. Okay, the last one we have to talk about is y equals the cotangent of theta over 3. We talked about the period for the cotangent is pi over our B, which is one-third in this case. Keep change flip makes that become 3 pi. So my asymptote is I'm going to do as we did before. We just start off. We have 1 at 0. And then I'm going to go over 3 pi units. Okay? I go over 3 pi units. Halfway is 3 pi over 2. That's my 0. All right? I like this one to be, uh, put my 1 here and my negative 1 here. And remember that halfway, it's pi, usually pi over 4 at 1. Okay, that's my 1, and here's my negative 1. Okay, but you would do half of this distance so that it would be 3 pi over 4 in this case. And we're going to connect it to make it look like our tangent curve. Okay, so this is that point, it's half the distance, so that's 3 pi over 4. And then this one where, where I have my negative 1 is you get from adding these two together, which is 3 pi over 4 plus 6 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 4. So we're good with our graphs, and we have graphed and evaluated reciprocal trigonometric functions.